Carl, when we knew that you were coming on the show, we thought we'd um, contact one of your closest friends in boxing to get his opinion on where you rank in the top 10. So without doing uh, This Is Your Life, any ideas of who we might have spoken to? The Son of God. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. SOG. We spoke to him. So do you want to hear what he's got to say? You might want to put your earplugs in for this bit. Let's, no, let's hear from on. God, listen, it's let's very, hear very, from... Difficult to, very difficult to offend me. Very difficult. Okay, well, let's hear what he had to say. I'm going to give him some ammunition. I'm going to give him something to talk about, you know, over the next couple of weeks. Carl, the thing about Carl Frotch was that, and I always respected about him, was his competitiveness because he's not really athletic. He's not – he's an overachiever. You know, if you look at him and just the way he fights, like, it's nothing that jumps out at you like, that, you know, that says, wow, that's a great fighter. But his work ethic, you know, his attention to detail, I know he used to keep, you know, binders full of his every workout that he did. Um, he's very tedious about his preparation. He was tough. He could take a shot. So he had other qualities that were intangibles that you couldn't really see. And I think he was an overachiever, but I, I don't, I think for me, he got hit too much. He took too much punishment and, and, you know, a lot of his big fights could have easily gone the other way. Even the fight with Jermaine Taylor, like he was, if Jermaine Taylor didn't fade and had better, you know, um, just, a, just was in better shape, he would have never lost that fight. So, I think he's up there, but I, I don't. I don't think he, he's the top dog, not at all. What do you think about that, Carl? <clears throat> that was absolutely spot on, to be honest. That was really good. Overachiever, maybe. I mean, I was never going to turn professional. I turned professional and won four world titles. If you count the WBA regular that I, I beat when I beat Kessler in the rematch. Um, so, yeah, and a lot of my a lot of the big fights, but many big fights are close. You know, you can look at you can look at all world champions that defend the title and fight in world titles. It's never always one side, and I mean, even even um, even Floyd Mayweather came close to getting beat, you know, and then he rematched and won um, straight away. So I put that to bed. But we all have bad nights, and we all have close fights. But a win's a win, a loss is a loss. Andre Ward, top fighter, and the opinion, what he says there, and everything he says, I can't really argue with it. To be honest, this is coming from a guy who beat me quite conclusively on point. But, you know, you're going to listen to my top three in a minute. And I've not changed it just because uh, he's not very complimentary of me. Andre Ward's in my top three. I won't give it away yet unless you want to know what my top three is. No, not, not yet. Um, I'm, that's I'm just totally intrigued. fair enough. I'm, tr I'm intrigued. Would, would, you not, would you not pull him up on the Jermaine Taylor? Does that not take away one of your great nights that if Jermaine Taylor would have well, been no. fitter, he would have beat you? When, when I fought Jermaine Taylor, he was probably just past his best, but he was at a new, it was at a new weight division. So he just come up to super middleweight. And he'd just beaten, um, he'd just beaten Jeff Lacey. Um, and he was one of Joe Calzaghe's best wins. And, and that best win has faded over time. That and the Kessler win was, was probably his best, two best wins. And that's faded over time because Jeff Lacey obviously was a hype job. It's as simple as that. Um, Jermaine Taylor beat Jeff Lacey before he stepped in with me. So he's still good. But yeah, if, if Jermaine Taylor was a bit fitter and he had a bit more steam in the tank, towards the end, he might have survived and won on points, but, but he didn't have any energy left in the tank because I sapped it out of him because I absolutely punched holes in him for the last three rounds. And that's what boxing is. It's not like saying ifs and buts and maybes. Boxing's all about timing. It's all about what you've got left in the tank in round 12. It's all about if you land the lucky punch. Now, Lennox Lewis has been knocked out a couple of times and he's one of the best, the greatest heavyweights of all time. Uh, so you have to take the result on the chin and look at the results and look at the stats and facts. And um, Andre Ward beat me fair and square on points in a boring fight, a dull affair, same as when he beat Kessler, headbutted him to bits, but he knows how to win. Um, he wins ugly, but he knows how to win. So if the son of God has got an opinion on me, I have to take it on the chin because he beat me. Uh, I don't know if you saw the Hatton uh, boxing show that we did last week. And it, there was a question that came out of that, that um, on his greatest night against Costa Zoo. He said if he could bottle up that performance and, and have that against anybody else in his career, he wouldn't have been beaten. I just wonder, um, I don't know what you think your best performance is, but if you bottled up the Pascal night or the Boutte night, both in your hometown arena where you, you were invincible, if you could bottle up that Carl Froch, do you think that anybody could have beaten you on your day, including Andre Ward? Well, I think the only person I've not beaten in my career is Andre Ward. And um, he's, he's retired undefeated. He's beaten everybody. He's beaten, he's beaten the best of the best. He's one of the, he's one of the best fighters of, of pretty much all time. Um, because you can look at his record, look at who he's beaten, how he's beaten them. All right, boring. But 
he don't get hit much. His defence is really good and he's, he's tough and strong up close. He's awkward, but he gets the job done. And um, I don't know who you would put in against Andre Ward and say beat him of his era. But I could go back, I could go earlier than that and go Roy Jones Jr. I think Roy Jones Jr. takes Andre Ward apart because the speed and the, the tenacity, the, the, the way in which he delivers his punches from, from so many different angles, I don't think Andre Ward would have been able to sort of bully Roy Jones and put him on his back foot and get close and do his ugly head and holding and hitting up close. I don't think Roy Jones would have let him get away with that. So he's not an all-time great, but he's a top, top fighter, Andre Ward, and he knows how to win. So I don't want to blow too much smoke up the son of God's arse, but you've got to give him credit where credit's due. He's absolutely... He's absolutely fantastic at winning the fights. He's a great fighter, skillful. What's he, won a, he won an Olympic gold medal as well. So you have to give him credit. Um, and there's nothing really you can say to rubbish him. The guy's a boring fighter. He's not exciting to watch. I've never re-watched any of his fights. I was fascinated with Roy Jones. I've watched all of his fights. And I've watched them more than once. And a lot of top heavyweight fighters and a lot of um, Mayweather's fights. I'll watch, and I'll watch again. Even when I've watched them live, I'll go and watch them back again. And I don't watch a lot of boxing. I would never watch an Andre Ward fight again, ever. I'd never watch it again. And um, why is that? It's just because he's not very exciting. And boxing is an entertainment business. So when I criticise Andre Ward, I just criticise his style. But his ability to win and his skill set and the way in which he takes care of business is effective and he's a winner. So if you're judging somebody by the results, you've got to say he's a top, top fighter. He's just not my cup of tea. I just turn it, turn it off when he's on because you don't excite me.